In this video, we're going to talk about some of the common artifacts that contaminate the EEG. This comes up near the beginning of the Recording and Analysis section of Felix's study, where it talks about recording the electrooculogram, or EOG. The EOG is a consequence of the fact that there's a standing electrical potential between the front and back chambers of the eye. You get positive at the front of the eye and negative at the back of the eye, creating an equivalent current dipole. This dipole creates a strong voltage that spreads to the scalp. The magnitude of the dipole remains constant over time, but as the eyes rotate, this produces a change in the distribution of the voltage field over the scalp. And if the eyes blink, the movement of the eyelids over the eyes changes the resistance, which in turn causes a brief change in the magnitude of the voltage over the scalp. Here's what the distribution of voltage looks like for an eye blink. If you look at the scale, you'll see that the voltage deflection is a couple hundred microvolts right above the eyes, and you can easily have 20 to 40 microvolts at sites like FC, CZ, and PZ. Do you see how the voltage is negative under the eyes and positive over the eyes? Researchers often take advantage of this by computing a bipolar vertical EOG signal, which is lower minus upper. A negative minus a positive is a bigger negative, so the bipolar VEOG allows us to see the blink even better. The bipolar VEOG also lets us look at upward and downward eye movements. If the eyes rotate downward, the voltage becomes positive below the eyes. And if they rotate upward, the voltage becomes positive above the eyes. To look at horizontal eye movements, we place horizontal EOG electrodes just lateral to each eye. When the eyes move leftward, we get a positive voltage over the left side of the head and a negative voltage over the right side of the head. And when the eyes move rightward, we get a positive voltage over the right side and a negative voltage over the left side. If we make a bipolar HEOG signal by taking HEOG left minus HEOG right, we again get a doubling of the signal and we eliminate most brain activity. The EOG is usually the largest source of artifacts in an EEG recording, but it's not the only source. Muscle contractions produce a large high frequency signal called the electromyogram or EMG. In an EEG recording, you mainly see EMG generated by the forehead muscles, the jaw muscles, and the neck muscles. If the subject doesn't sit still, you can also get large movement artifacts like this. As a result, most experiments require the subject to sit quietly in a comfortable chair. Recently, people have started recording ERPs while subjects move around in natural or virtual reality environments, but they have to deal with a ton of artifacts.